Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for joining me on my weekly walk and talk here. Today I'm gonna try to talk through a kind of a complicated uh, concept and I'm gonna be exploring the work of post-postmodern, post-structuralist uh, thinker Jean Baudrillard. He, um, his book Simulation and Simulacra would be kind of the most familiar to those that watch the movie The Matrix um, each actor on that movie was um, advised to read this book before they started filming. And the book Simulation and Simulacra is actually also um, featured in the movie uh, when Neo uh, looks for his disc in the beginning part of the movie, uh, he's actually opening the book Simulation and Simulacra. So what does simulacra mean? How do we can we understand this idea of we live in a simulation or a simulated reality. And from Jean Baudrillard's um, perspective, and I'm going to use this this uh, this analogy that was uh, I found in watching Vocal, uh, watching a uh, uh, Benjamin Boyce talk with Vocal and um, James Lindsay, uh, where they talked about this concept. So how can we think of we live in a simulation and this idea of simulacra. Simulacra is essentially uh, a copy of a copy. And this metaphor was used of, let's uh, think of back in the Roman times. Let's say you and I are walking in a field of strawberries and we're looking for some delicious strawberries to eat. And we look at uh, the different kinds and the varieties and there's some plumpy juicy ones, there's some smaller ones, some that are not yet uh, completely ripe yet. And we find some excellent strawberries we pick them off of the uh, vine and we eat them and we enjoy our delicious strawberries, right? That is a, uh, a more kind of real experience than cut to uh, the 1960s, right? And now you have factory farming and you have the selection and optimization of strawberries. Um, so you have fam fa uh, and you have uh, strawberries now available uh, kind of a, a year year round where before it was kind of really seasonal so you have these factory farms that are distributing and are um, concocting strawberries and making sure that they're all juicy they're all plump you know they're all kind of uniform right so this is kind of the first level of, of uh, a simulation here right and then from there some corporation said you know what I can take these strawberries and I can uh, make them into um, a piece of candy right so they take the strawberry and they they manufacture it they process it and then you have a piece of strawberry candy which intensifies the flavor of the strawberry you know tenfold and then you have a, a delicious piece of candy that you start eating and this candy is uh, another kind of derivation of the original strawberry so you have the original strawberry in the field then you have the factory farming of that strawberry. Now you have the distilling of that strawberry into a piece of candy. Um, and then cut to a little bit further down the road, you have this idea of uh, making a strawberry soft drink, strawberry soda. So again, you distill this process even more. Now you have a strawberry that you are um, adding, uh, you're adding sugar to and you're making it into a drink. So now you're having a strawberry flavored drink that is another kind of derivation, another copy of a copy of the strawberry. So we're moving from this kind of real experience of picking a delicious strawberry, you know, from, you know, a thousand years ago to this farming, factory farming and then distillation of the strawberry. And then you have a, a corporation says, you know what, I'm going to intensify that strawberry flavor even more and I'm gonna add corn syrup instead of uh, sugar, high fructose corn syrup, and I'm gonna make it into a frozen slushy that you can get at, you know, 7-Eleven. And so people that are kids that are, you know, born in the 1990s, they have this delicious, this delicious sugary um, drink slushy that is just a highly intensified and derived flavor of the strawberry. Right, so it's even a more of a, der uh, a derivation, right? So you got this simulation, this simulacra of strawberry, of the real strawberry uh, through this process of, of processing, right? So, and then you can, you can take the, the analogy even further or you can use any kind of, uh, kind of, um, any kind of product to, 
think through this, think of the pumpkin spice latte that you get at Starbucks, right? They've made, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars on this particular product. And the ingredients of a pumpkin spice latte, there's not even pumpkin in it, right? It's, it's, there's nutme nutmeg and, you know, other type flavors like that. So you don't even have the essential uh, pumpkin in this perspective. So you have just a kind of complete simulated experience of, of uh, the reality of eating a pumpkin or eating a strawberry. Now, take this process and you can extrapolate it and reflect it in any domain of our existence now. And specifically politics, right? There's this idea that you have a Republican and a Democrat party that they have essential differences and that uh, you are to vote for one and not the other. But this idea of what's happened to the strawberry has happened in our political space now, where you really have a kind of a, a, a faux political difference between the two parties. And you have someone like President Trump, former President Trump, who is essentially a WWE um, character. And you have this kind of heel uh, and baby face. So you have the good guy and the bad guy that you're rooting for. And it's and it's not really it's not really tied to actual policies or actual political work. It's tied to this superficial, you know, uh, uh, appearance, this copy of a copy of politics, and uh, it's essentially the kayfabe, the kayfabing, permeating all forms of life. Kayfabe is this concept from wrestling, from um, WWF back in the 90s, 80s, you know, you kind of had this, uh, you know, people thought that wrestling was real and you kind of had this wink and in, in, in a kind of a wink to the um, to the camera and to the audience that, hey, it's not real. It's not really real. So, you know, you don't really have to kind of worry about these people really hating each other or whatnot. And uh, this has now permeated our media, you know, with how CNN has completely become uh, co-opted. You know, Fox News for the longest time, you know, kind of, you know, was this uh, caricature of a news uh, news agency, whether you agree with them or not. But they were just they took this idea and ran with it. And, you know, CNN and MSNBC and all the other news corporations have taken that and intensified it even more where it's hard to to tell what is real and what is fake in terms of the news broadcast, in terms of the political um, the, the political news conferences. You know, you have Trump calling out the fake news. So you, and this kind of alleviates a little bit of the cognitive dissonance of kind of knowing that what they're doing and talking about, you know, isn't real. It's kind of like this kind of fake showmanship. Um, but that's left the collective psyche um, just completely overrun with this uh, uncertainty and this ambiguity of what's real. And, um, so this is kind of the, you know, a, a short breakdown of this concept from, uh, of simulation and simulacra from Jean Baudrillard. Um, so things have become, uh, th their appearances have become what's real and not just their appearances, a copy and a derivation of their appearances. I mean, you can even apply this to the, uh, the financial crisis, right? The default swap crisis where you had all of these loans that were cut up and um, you know formed into derivatives which are just again copies of copies they're not even real or really tied to anything of value and this idea of where and what is value in this world of this simulated reality that we currently exist in and Jean Baudrillard had a critique of the matrix because in the matrix there's a clear delineation between Zion the real world and the matrix the computer world and in his work, he says that the line between the real world and the simulated digital world has been blurred. So you really don't know if what you're experiencing is reality or is a simulation. So um, let me know what you guys think here. I know it's kind of a little bit of a choppy, uh, choppy explanation here. But I think, is there a real world? Is there a reality? Is there truth still in the world? Um, you know, I have my thoughts and I think you can probably guess what my thoughts are, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, are we living in a simulation and is there a actual real world? Is there a base reality that we can return to? So anyways, guys, hope everybody is well, and I will talk to you guys soon. God bless.